You've probably heard about the transition called transformer transition. It's been going viral lately and it's been used by a lot of car editors. I actually used it in my latest edit and I got over a thousand likes, plus tons of requests for a tutorial. So in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it so you can use it in your own edits too. Without wasting any more time. clips to the timeline and make sure both clips have the same angle or perspective. Next, go to the last frame of your first clip and press Ctrl Alt S to save the frame. I usually name this one frame 1. Then inside the render queue, change the resolution to full and quality to best. After that, click on render to save your frame as a Photoshop file. Now open the Photoshop file, select the remove tool and highlight your card to remove it from the background. Then press Ctrl S to save the file and close Photoshop. Import the Photoshop file into your project and trim it to the point where you want the transition to begin. Also make sure to place it underneath all the other layers. Now go to the last frame of your clip and press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer. Then right click on it, go to time and select freeze frame. Make sure the timing matches the last frame of your clip. Place the frozen frame layer to the point where you want your transition to begin. Then select the pen tool and start creating a mask around different sections of your car. For example, I usually start by masking the tires. Try to keep your mask as clean as possible, but it's okay if you include some of the shadows in a few areas. After that, select the mask layer and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then press M on your keyboard and delete the mask from the duplicated layer. Also make sure to rename this layer so you don't lose track of it later, since you'll need to repeat this whole process again. Now select the second layer and start masking another section of the car. For example, I'm going with bumpers this time. Again, duplicate this layer and press M on your keyboard to remove the mask. Now you'll need to repeat this process until all the sections of the car are masked. I'm just going to speed up the video and let Jazz and Paris play in the background so you don't get bored. I've masked every single section of the first car and now it's time to move on to the second car. Go to the first frame of your second clip and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then right click on it, go to time and choose freeze frame. Again, make sure your freeze frame is exactly on the first frame by matching the time remap. Select all the layers of the first car and click on this icon to hide them for now. Now you need to mask every single section on the second car that you masked on the first one. For example, if I mask the front tire in the first car, I need to mask the front tire on the second car as well. So just select the pen tool and start masking that same section on your second car. Again, duplicate this layer, press M on your keyboard and remove the mask. Then give it a name similar to the one you used for the first car's layer, so you can easily recognize which part of the car it belongs to. Now select the second layer and start masking another section of the car. In my case it's bumpers, so I'll just create a clean mask around them. Again, duplicate the layer and remove the mask from the duplicated one. Then repeat this process for all the sections of your second car. Alright, I've finished masking every single section of my second car just like I did with the first car and now it's ready for the next steps. But before we continue, I want to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Render Forest. Render Forest is one of the best platforms out there for designers and video editors. It can seriously level up your workflow. The website offers hundreds of high quality intros, logo animations and even music visualizers from big name labels. All you have to do is choose a template you like and customize it directly in their online editor. You can even use their image generator to create unique visuals just for yourself. And once you're happy with your project, just hit render and you're good to go. Here's just a small taste of what you can create using Render Forest. Most of the tools on their website are completely free. But if you're interested in unlocking full access to all their premium features with no limits, make sure to use my code SIMPLIFIED to get 20% off. And now let's jump back into the tutorial. The next step is to select all the layers of your second car and click on this icon to hide them for now. Then select all the layers of your first car and press P on your keyboard to reveal the position settings. Click on the stopwatch icon to add a keyframe for the position. Then move 20 frames forward in the timeline and reposition each layer of the car individually. So each layer should separate from each other just like this. Now move another 20 frames but this time just add a keyframe without changing the position. It's better to let the layers stay like this for a few frames. 
Next, move another 20 frames forward and reposition each layer again. Then again, move another 20 frames forward and reposition the layers. One last time, move another 20 frames forward and reposition the layers again. And finally, move to the last frame and reset the position value for each layer so they return to the original position. So far you should have something that looks like this, but don't worry, we're going to fix it. First, select all the layers, hold ALT on your keyboard, then click and drag the last keyframe closer to the point where you want the transition to end. This part mostly depends on the timing of your music. Then select all the layers and press F9 on your keyboard to easy ease them. Now open the graph editor and for these keyframes create a curve that looks like this. And for the first keyframe create something that looks like this. At this point your transition should look like this. You can leave it as if you're happy with it but I found that it looks better when the layers don't all move at the same time. So I recommend adjusting the keyframes for each layer like this. So they're not all following the same timing. This helps create a much smoother and more dynamic result. Check the mic and make sure it sound right boys. After that, play it back. You'll see that your transition looks way better. Now it's time to use this transition to transform the first car into the second car. First, select the position keyframes from a layer in the first car and press Ctrl C to copy them. Then find the matching layer in the second car, move to the point where the transition begins and press Ctrl V to paste the keyframes. Next, select another layer from the first car and copy its position keyframes. Then find the matching section in the second car and paste the keyframes. Repeat this process for all the layers of your second car, but make sure to move to the first keyframe in the timeline before pasting the values. Now if you select all the layers of the second car, unhide them and play the video, you'll see that all the sections of the second car perfectly following the movement of the first car. Select all the layers in the timeline and enable motion blur. Now to create the transition, select one layer in the timeline and start moving forward frame by frame until you reach to the point where that section has the most motion blur. In my case, I choose tires. And at this point in the timeline, they have a lot of motion blur. Then cut the layer of that section in both the first and second car at that exact point and switch them so the second car section replaces the first. Next, select another layer and again move forward frame by frame until you find the point where that section has a lot of motion blur. Then cut that section in both the first and second car layers just like this. Now just repeat that process for all the layers of both cars. For each layer find the point with the most motion blur and make the switch between the first and second car at that moment. And once you play it back you'll see that your transformer transition is complete. Now it's time to make it look even better. So first let's fake the shadows because we don't want them to disappear during the transition. First create a new solid layer using the same color as your car's shadows. Then press T on your keyboard to bring up the opacity setting and decrease the opacity. Now select the pen tool and create a mask like this to fake the shadows. Then trim the solid layer so it only appears during the transition. Now set the opacity back to 100%, expand the mask settings and increase the mask feather to make your shadow look more natural. The next thing I did was add this car wireframe to the scene to help fill the empty space during the transition. You can find the wireframe from the link in the description. Then just place the wireframe beneath all the car sections and align it with your car based on your scene. Also add a triton effect to the wireframe to help match its colors with the background. You just need to change the mid-tone color to something that fits your scene. I also found out that it looks really nice if you animate the position of the wireframe. Give it a motion like this. Just make sure to reset its position before the second car is fully revealed. Also make sure to apply easy ease on the keyframes and adjust the graph to create a curve like this. And guess what? If you did that, you also need to animate your shadow along with the wireframe to make everything look more natural. And by the way, don't forget to enable motion blur on the shadow and the wireframe. Now we also need to bring the background from the second car clip. To do that, move to the first frame of your second clip and press Ctrl Alt S to save the frame as a Photoshop file. Then open the file in Photoshop and use the remove tool to remove the car from the background. It's the exact same process as we did with the first car. Make sure to press Ctrl S and then close the Photoshop. Import the Photoshop file into your project and place it above your background layer. And now it's time to animate it. First, select the pen tool and create a mask around the ground in your layer. Then, duplicate this layer, press M on your keyboard and remove the mask. In the duplicated layer, create a mask around the walls. Duplicate this layer one more time, remove the mask and create another mask around the roof. Now add a position animator for each of these layers and make them appear from different directions. Also add a slightly delay between each one so they don't appear at the same time. Finally apply easy ease to the keyframes for a smoother animation. Now select all the layers you've created and pre-compose them to prepare for the final steps. What you've gotta do now is to create a new camera layer with the default settings. You don't need to change anything in here, just click OK. 
trim the camera layer so it's only active during the transition. Make sure to enable 3D for the pre-composed layer. Expand the camera settings and add keyframes for both position and point of interest. Then animate the camera in a few steps to your liking to give the scene a more dynamic look. Make sure to reset the camera to its original position in the final move. And finally, easy ease the keyframes and create a curve that looks like this. Your transition is ready, but I also want to show you how to create a shake effect that looks really nice with this transition. First, create a new adjustment layer and trim it to about 30 frames after the transition begins. Then add the motion tile effect to the adjustment layer. Change the tile center value to 1000 and add a keyframe. Move 10 frames forward and change the value to 940. Then move another 10 frames and change the value to 980. Finally move to the last frame, then right click and reset the value. Also make sure to enable mirror edges and slightly increase these two values. Next, add optics compensation to the adjustment layer. Enable reverse lens distortion and change its value to 75, then add a keyframe. Move to the last frame of your adjustment layer and change its value back to 0. Now duplicate the adjustment layer and place it at the point where the second clip begins. And also add the exposure effect to the adjustment layer. Change the exposure value to 5 and add a keyframe. Move to the end of the adjustment layer and change the value back to 0. Now play it back and congratulations, your transformer transition is ready. Let's see it one more time, I really like it. Alright, I guess that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I really hope I was able to help you out. Fellas, never forget to subscribe to Adobe Simplified and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.